Boom shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love and we have some daily crypto news coming at you live because that's the fun way to do it. Stream it live so then when you mess up and you say dumb shit, it's just live. It's on there on the internet for everyone. So, big week today. It is Monday, April 23rd, I think, 2018. And before we get started on everyone, on everything, make sure if you haven't, subscribe, hit the like button, all that fun stuff. So this week, looking at coin market cap. Well, guys, we have done it. Four hundred billion dollars, four hundred billion dollar market cap. We have hit it up here. All right, Bitcoin dominance is down a little bit, thirty-seven point eight percent, and Bitcoin is hovering right at that nine thousand dollar big even. So that's a big one today. Everybody's. Not sure if it's going to pass. Is it going to go up to $10,000? I don't know. Where's Bitcoin going to go? We'll look at that in a bit. But Ethereum has been way up for the week. $644. It was up from like $500. Ripple at $0.87. Cents. Bitcoin Cash is up big time at $1,399. Wow, that has gone up quite a bit. It was at like $600 some dollars at a low. EOS at 1158 And Litecoin at $151. Cardano $0.28. Cents. A lot of good deals out there still, a lot of good deals, especially where the market is going over the long term. I like to look at things at the long term. That's my goal. But taking a look, we have the market cap coming back up. I mean, there was a huge run up and then a pullback, and now it's coming right back up. So that's great. I'm sure everybody loves that. Same thing, all the altcoins especially. And Bitcoin, seeing a little bit of a redu reduction in dominance with an increase with uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, all of that fun stuff. Now, if we go back to the markets and we take a look at the big gainers for the day, well, we have a couple. We have Bytem up here. We have Bitcoin Cash. So let's take a look at why those ones are gaining, and then we'll get into the news. Get into the news at that time. Well, bite them up to a dollar eight, and if you can see here, I mean, it is just like a wall. You see, just whoo, parabolic. Well, guys, there is good reason for that. Bite them has the announcement of their mainnet launch in 24 hours, or even less by now. It could be less. That was 10 hours ago. In 14 hours, mainnet launch. Now, does mainnet do mainnet launches really do anything other than for hype? No. So the price may come back down after that. But Bytem's adding, planning on putting all of your assets on the blockchain. So that's what they're doing. But mainnet launch, great news for everyone who's been holding Bytem for a while. Bitcoin Cash has soared up. I mean, it was down at $600 April 6th. Now it's $1,400. It has more than doubled. And main reason for that news is... Bitmain will be burning 12% of Bitcoin Cash transaction fees and calling on other miners to follow. Now, basically, they're doing that. Bitmain is one of the large miners. Right now, they're mining 7.3% of all Bcash. And they're doing that to reward people who hold Bcash because, uh, you know, the basic economics, supply and demand, less supply same demand, price still goes up. Less supply, even more demand, price goes up even more. So by burning some, they're lessening supply, helping increase the price, which obviously worked. Obviously, price jumped up. Now, taking a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's seeing some resistance at the $9,000 mark. I mean, it's a big even. Who didn't see that coming? Some people are talking 10000 and it may get up to 10000 it may get up to 10000 but first it's got to break through the $9,000 mark. We did recently see it break through the 50-day moving average, right in between the 50 and the 200-day moving average. And it also broke through this trend line. So I think all in all, things are looking good for Bitcoin. But we'll have to see. Will it break through the $9,000 mark? Also, I'm not sure if you can see it down there. It's kind of light. But volume, we need to see some increase in volume to help that break through. So, on to the news, because there's some exciting news. I know you guys would love these news things going on. Well, Tron has announced a $30 million, $30 million Tron airdrop. And basically what they're doing is they're just giving Tron to anyone who's held Ethereum. So basically anyone who's held at least one Ethereum on a public ledger since January 1st, 2018, will receive a random amount of Tron between 10 and 100 tokens 
that means you could get up to $5 of free Tron. Which, you know, doesn't sound too cool. But, but, I mean, potentially, if you just put that away somewhere, forget about it. You could potentially, I mean, it might be worth something in a day. In a couple days, year, a couple years, something like that. So that's the cool thing about airdrops. You get free tokens, you don't have to worry about anything, and then one day, it's worth a whole bunch. Now, other news. This is my favorite. Bitcoin Lightning Network matures with record 2,000 nodes, $150,000 capacity. Guys, the Lightning Network, at least for me, this is the way that I see it. Lightning Network spells death for Bcash. Okay? I mean, right now, as it is, because there's not that many transactions, Bitcoin transactions are less expensive than, or just as expensive as Bcash transactions. They're not as fast. But, with Lightning Network, we're going to have instantaneous, almost free transactions on the Bitcoin network. Now, they're layer two solutions, so they're not done on chain, they're done off chain, but because of that, they're done a lot faster. Now, as you can see in this little graph right here, we have all the nodes on uh, the Lightning Network, but check this out. So this dude, Eric Zielinski, he's talking about how Lightning Network is getting quicker. Well. On-chain, Bitcoin transactions cost 669 Satoshis right now. I kind of like the number. But using the Lightning Network, which is working, I mean, it's not completely production-ready for mainnet, but it is working. It costs one Satoshi over 600 times cheaper than on-chain transactions. That's going to blow shit out of the water because you have instantaneous transactions. As soon as this is production-ready, that, to me, spells an end to, or at least a drop in price of Bcash because you'll have faster transactions with Bitcoin, you'll have cheaper transactions with Bitcoin, and you have the name brand Bitcoin. So why would anyone want Bcash at that point? I don't know. That's just my opinion. Now, Coinbase's Visa debit card. Did you know they had a Visa debit card? I was actually not aware, but they have a Visa debit card. If you go and take a look on their website, it's called the Shift Card. So you can get it in the U.S. to spend Bitcoin anywhere Visa is accepted. That's pretty cool. So basically, you just uh, pay them $10. So Coinbase needs to make a little bit more money, but you pay them $10. And then you can use your Shift Card to pay anywhere Visa is accepted. And you can even use Litecoin. Charlie Lee wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that you could use Litecoin to do this. Now, there was the light pay thing that didn't really go through, and then there was talk about Litecoin partnering with 10x for a card there, but he just wants you to know that you can buy, use Litecoin as well. Now, that's big news, but not as big as this. I think this is the biggest news all day. That's why I put it first in the title, in the headline. Biggest news all day. Amazon Web Services introduces Ethereum and Hyperledger blockchain templates. In case this does not uh, make you see giant worldwide adoption, it should. Amazon's freaking huge. They dominate like over 40% of retail sales in the United States. They dominate a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, on their web services, which is their what everyone uses for data online, you can now have your own blockchain that you don't have to hire a blockchain programmer for. You can just have a blockchain on either Ethereum or Hyperledger with just a few clicks. So in an attempt to make it easier for the Amazon Web Services clients to create blockchain-based solutions, the company introduced AWS blockchain templates that will enable users to create and launch their own blockchain networks. Now this is kind of crazy because that competes directly with Arc, with Nulls, who's trying to create these point-and-click type of blockchain solutions. Amazon, you can do it on their AWS services right there with just a few clicks so they're aiming to make it very very easy you're supposed to get the benefits of blockchain network without having to hire the blockchain developers that is nuts also big news with v chain they all announce a partnership with imp asia so the nanotech digital identity solutions this is great because everybody wants digital identity I mean, if we take a look at things like Ontology had a big surge last week because they are looking to do trust and identity on the blockchain. Well, VeChain is doing that as well. VeChain has had a lot of very significant partnerships recently. This one big as well because, hell, if you can do, if you can 
be identified. I mean, I'll just tell you a little bit of a story. There's a, every day I get emails from people saying, hey, I was contacted by so-and-so on Telegram saying it was you um, about doing a review, and I was like, yeah, that's not me. So being able to have digital identity to where your identity could be linked to all of your digital assets, that is freaking awesome. So I think that's a big partnership for them. Now they're aiming to do a few things with this. Adding the nano identification to products enables a new world of connected things. So we have the whole IoT. Enabling a security level with photonic property, bringing a truly endless life cycle to digital identification and opens untapped scalability, scalability potential and cost efficiency. Now, Binance, on the other hand, Binance is doing some pretty cool stuff, which will only make them bigger. I mean, right now they are the largest exchange out there. This could potentially make them bigger, stealing a whole bunch of people from Poloniex, other places like that. But they're adding the addition of US dollar and euro trading pairs to more cryptos. Because basically, with Binance previously, you would have to trade back out from, Bit from anything into Bitcoin or Ethereum or um, Binance coins. Now, they'll have the US dollar the um, euro trading pairs. So basically, when we have fluctuations in the market, you'll be able to hedge it with using the US dollar trading pair back into US dollar. So that could be big for Binance because once they do that, once they do that, you'll be able to get into cryptos a lot easier directly without having to go through Bitcoin, Binance coin, Ethereum, things like that. Um, but also you'll be able to hedge your bets so much more trading volume going on there. Uh, former JP Morgan banker says crypto market will get much bigger, and I believe he is correct. And really, just to summarize it down the end, he says even if it's only 5% of all money at the end of the day, the market is going to be a lot bigger than it is today. I mean, right now, $400 billion market, there is billions of trillions of zillions of dollars out there. So even if it's only 5% of that, it could be huge. It could be huge. We could be having sick out parties. We could be. <laughs> and even more, and even more reason for cryptocurrency adoption. PayPal increases its fees yet again to make it even more expensive, almost as annoying as using a bank. But basically, they've increased their base fees. So a new fee structure, which includes a $4.99 fee for sending any amount out of the United States. That's in addition to 2.9% if it's made with a credit or debit card and a 2.5% margin for a foreign exchange. So basically, one dude on Reddit said that it costs him 17 euros in fees to send 60 euros on eBay. That's a lot of money. That's like worse than using Bitcoin back when the network was all congested. Um, not only that, but it also takes three to five business days to get there. So why on earth would anybody use PayPal at this point when they could use cryptocurrencies and talking about cryptocurrencies, which ones are they going to use? Well, Nano seems to be pretty popular, right? Formerly Rayblox, now Nano, regaining some confidence after the hack, the BitGrail hack of April 8th. They are regaining some confidence now and preparing for Ledger hardware wallets. Now, they've submitted the code for the Ledger hardware wallets. They're awaiting approval. So if that happens, could see some price fluctuations, increase, decrease, whatever it may be. And that's all great news. Everybody's excited. And then, oh, Binance freezes nano deposits due to blockchain issues. Basically, they're just having issues with the wallets right now. It's not the first time this has happened for the nano, but apparently it gets cleared up pretty quickly. So hopefully it will get cleared up again. But, you know, this seems to be a recurring thing for nano. Now, last news for the day. Last news for the day is potentially big news. Uh... BitHum, South Korea's biggest exchange, is going to conduct an ICO in Switzerland. Now you may say, why Switzerland? Why not South Korea? Because there's regulations in South Korea and you can do whatever the hell you want in Switzerland. You can make cheese with holes in it. You can make clocks. You could even have an army for a neutral country. You could do whatever you want in Switzerland. Not only that, you can also have an ICO. And they're doing that because Switzerland is very pro-financial markets. It's, good. it's just good for the financial markets. So they're going to have an ICO later on in the year. It's not said specifically what they're doing with the ICO, but potentially it could be uh, having a um, exchange coin such as Binance, KuCoin, or Huobi. They all have their exchange coins, which cut down on trading fees, doing whatever they may do. 
this could be a benefit similar way now as of right now there's no way to get into this um, ICO other than just having some connections with a large pool or uh, things like that but that is a big one to keep an eye out for now now that's it for today that's it I'm just planning on doing these uh, news things day at noon so it's like 9 a.m. for people on the west coast noon for people here 5 or 6 p.m. for people in Europe just to keep you up to date with what's going on with the news I'll still be doing reviews every day and all that fun stuff if you guys have any suggestions of coins you want me to review or things you want me to take a look at and report on or make videos on please put it down in the comments the suggestions the chat whatever it's been fun hanging out with you guys I will see you guys again at noon tomorrow all right peace yo blah